Hey there, internets. I'm Michael, and this is Two Can Play That Game, with my first impressions of Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. So, what is it? Well, it's kind of hard to describe it without talking about Pandemic. But I guess that's kind of okay. It's in the title. It is Pandemic, but it's not Pandemic. It's, it's kind of confusing in that way. So in Reign of Cthulhu, you are investigators that are working to close these gates to the other world in order to stop the nightmare creatures coming through, such as Cthulhu and the other old ones, and therefore the end of the world. So it's a very noble cause, much like with Pandemic. And how does this all actually work? Well, the board is made up of these locations which are split into different colour towns. So these are sort of like the different coloured areas on the pandemic board. And rather than it being cities, it's locations. So it's things like the graveyard, the bus station, etc. So again, parallels and similarities, but growing more and more different as we talk about it. Well, with the board split up like this, you are collecting cards. It is a set collection game. In order to be able to close a gate, you need to have five cards of that colour. But you need it to be one person who has those. So you're all collecting cards each turn. Two cards. Sorry, uh, is it two cards or three cards? Two cards, I think. Um, same as with Pandemic. So at the end of your turn, you take cards. You're trying to collect these up and switch them between each other and you need to be in the same location, in the same colour, because the cards this time don't have the locations on. No, it is just those different areas of the board, the different colours. So that again is another difference, another way it's changing. It's becoming less constrictive. You must be in this specific location to change, you just need to be in this colour. And so you're collecting those up and when you manage to, you have to get to the gate which is a bit like getting to the research station, and you then trade those cards in to close that gate. Now, closing the gate does not actually stop things coming. It's kind of like curing the disease in pandemic against sunsetting the disease in pandemic. You'll only cure it. Now, in Reign of Cthulhu, you can only sunset once, and only if you get the appropriate special card. So as with Pandemic, as well as there being the location cards in the player's decks, there are also special ability cards that will aid them and give them extra things they can do, such as removing cultists. Now, cultists are like the disease, but in Pandemic, they are people and they're little figures rather than little cubes. So they're actually quite nice little plastic figures. So that's a good thing there. And at the end of your turn, after you've drawn your cards, you then do your infect. Although obviously it's not actually infecting, you're placing cultists rather than placing disease. So it's actually just the spread of the Cthulhu religion you're trying to wipe out as you get rid of these cultists. So rather than going around curing disease, you're going around killing cultists, which is kind of dark really. Uh, but they are evil cultists, so I guess it's okay. As you can see, there are a lot of similarities in this game. Now obviously, you win the game if you manage to close all the gates. So this is like curing all the diseases in Pandemic. So where is it really going to split off and be different? What is going to make this game not just a re-theme of Pandemic? Well, it isn't a re-theme of Pandemic. It has a lot in common with Pandemic. They have taken Pandemic, they've kept some of the more cooperative mechanisms of that set collection and the way things are placed out and taken away. But there are a lot of differences. For example, there are no outbreaks anymore. Now, what I mean by that is you don't have an outbreak track and you don't go, ha, ah, outbreak, spread cultists. What happens is when you would place a fourth cultist, rather than it being an outbreak, you summon a Shogoth, which is an even nicer mini, and there are three of these. So that's different. And 
when some of the cards are turned over for infecting, some of them have picture of a little Shogoth on it. That means you move that Shogoth. And if Shogoths reach the gates and go through those gates, you then turn over a card that's an old one. Because you no longer have an infection rate marker, you have old one cards. So you're turning these over, and as you turn more and more of them over, you're increasing the number of cultists you put out. As well as each one of these, different old ones doing something different when you turn it over. So often it's just make things harder and worse for you, but it's a one-off thing when you turn that over. Now, it's important to note that as with pandemic, you have the epidemics. I can't remember what they're called, but it is a card that if you turn over when you're drawing your cards, it will make things harder for you. Primarily the way it will do this is it will bring out an old one but you don't know which old one, because each game you're gonna have different old ones and you're gonna have them in different orders. So that's another way this kind of varies from Pandemic, and probably for the better, I would say. It gives more variation. I've always found Pandemic to be fine on variety because of the way the cities come up and the disease spreads and the characters you have and the actions you choose. It tends to always feel different to me. But I know a lot of people out there have complained about Pandemic being too repetitive, being too much the same each game. And the fact that these gods are going to be coming out in a diff these old ones are going to be coming out in a different order and different old ones that will do different things is going to make it more different. So the replay value on Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu is higher than that on Pandemic. Now, what other differences are there in this? Well, one of the differences is in the setup of the game. And I expect that future reprints of Pandemic may actually utilize this. And it comes from the way that you choose your character. So in Reign of Cthulhu, the rules state that you deal two to each person, and then they pick one to play, to take. So you'll deal two, and that person to one person, they get to pick, oh, well, do I want this one or do I want this one? Well, I think this one will be the most useful of these two. I'll go for that one. You then do the next person, takes the one that you didn't want, plus a different one, and is doing that same choice. So there's an element of choice there. And as you go around the table, kind of thinking about what other people have got and building on that, I think it works very nicely. It gives a bit of randomization, a bit of variety in how your team is going to be formed each game. But without it being purely randomized, and still gives you an element of decision making, but without it being, you just choose them all. So I really do expect them to include this in the rules for future reprints of Pandemic. Whether they will or not, I don't know. Even if they don't, I would suggest actually doing this as a house rule. It's a really good one. So obviously, as you can tell, I kind of liked Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. I was surprised. I went into it being like, well, it's a big game. I, I should give it a go. You know, it might be OK. I like Pandemic, but I figured it would just be a reskin of Pandemic. Exactly the same. Play the same. But what it's done is kept all the good points of Pandemic. You know, that tension, that fear of things going wrong that builds as the game goes on, that escalates every time those Epidemic cards comes out. They've kept that. They kept the fact that you're talking to each other, going, well, if I do this, you can do this. And, you know, and deciding and getting disagreements, going, well, no, I think we should do this. It's my go. I'm doing this. You know, you've got that same gameplay there. But the whole horror theme makes it feel more thematic. The variety that the old ones provide is a boost. The change in way you select your characters is a boost. The fact that you no longer have to be in a specific city. I kind of like that. It's simplified that aspect of it, but there's still plenty of going on to make it difficult. And okay, you no longer have the whole building a research station, but you have bus stations that allow you to travel between towns quickly. So that's good. There, there is a lot going on here. There's, a, there's changes that are small enough to make it feel different. Now, do I think it's better than Pandemic? Possibly for me, I would say it is better because of that extra variety. The change in theme is a theme I'm more interested in. I would say it is better than Pandemic. Will I get it given that I've got Pandemic? Because there is so much similar. 
There are differences, but there is a lot similar. And that's why Pandemic is in the name. I might add it onto my wish list, but I'm not going to run out and buy it. If I did buy it, it would probably end up replacing Pandemic. Because they are similar enough that you all go, oh, well, we'll just play the one that we prefer. You know, you're never going to go, oh, well, I prefer this one, but I'm going to choose to play the other one this time. It's unlikely to happen. So do you need to rush out and get it? If you're happy with Pandemic, you'll like Pandemic. Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. If you didn't like Pandemic because of the lack of variety, the theme, etc., then you're probably going to like this. It fixes a lot of the things people had wrong with Pandemic. So it is going to be a good game. It's going to be a successful game. Uh, so I do hope that you found this useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing to the channel and also sharing it with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.